Following traumatic mass casualty events like this, it can be difficult to talk about them with children. Many parents are left grappling with whether or not they should address the horrific act and struggle with fears their kids may have about going back to school. Will they be safe? Professor of Psychology and Director of the Rutgers Social, Emotional and Character Development Lab, Maurice Elias, joins me to discuss how you can make the process easier. Now, when horrific events happen, like the one in Texas, what do we tell our children, especially our youngest? The most important thing our young children want to hear is reassurance. They want to know they're safe. They want to know that it's not going to happen to them. And we can say that to them honestly, because the, the likelihood of this happening is very, very small. Of course, it's so tragic when it happens. But for any given child, uh, we are wanting to give them the sense that they are safe. And, and it's parents' assurance of that that really makes the difference. And Maurice, what age do you feel is appropriate to address tragedies with children? Well, you know, I think parents have to know their kids. Uh, but certainly once we get up to the upper middle school, grades four and up, uh, the kids are going to be seeing and hearing things uh, that their parents can't control. And so it's important for parents to raise the issues with them, to ask if they've heard about the incident, if they have any questions about it. But I don't think that parents should have to want their kids to absorb every detail. Uh, I think your kids will be the guide to how deep you want to go. Now, obviously, once your kids are in high school age, uh, it, is, it is important for them to be engaged in the world. And so you want to have conversations about these things. Um, but, but the most important thing is that we, we want to allow our children to develop their own perspectives on this. And we want them to be able to think uh, independently and also relate emotionally to these events that have happened. As a mom to a three-year-old, how should I speak with my preschooler? How should people speak with elementary school age children? My own view is that there's no conversation to have about these things with uh, preschool children. That uh, if, they, if they raise a question, bring something up to you, um, that's fine. If they, if they happen to, for example, see something on television and they say to you, uh, you know, mommy, why are those people crying? Uh, you can say something, something bad happened to them. Uh, some people were hurt in their community, um, but we're fine here. Uh, they, I don't think preschoolers uh, need to know the details in any way of these kinds of events. I hate to say it, but uh, they're going to they're gonna get older and they're going to hear about more stuff. Uh, we don't have to rush it. And how should you speak to older children and should you initiate a conversation or wait for them to come to you? I think, I think there's a balance there. Uh, I think you, if you know that they've been exposed to this, if you know that they've heard things about it, read things about it, then uh, it's important for you to broach the subject with them if they don't broach it to you. Uh, it's, this goes back to the question of what the school does. It's very important for schools to be communicating with parents how they are responding to the situation. What are they doing? What are they saying? With which classes? So the parents know to be on the same page with the school around what's happening. And kids, especially older ones who have seen this happen time and time again, may be feeling helpless that school shootings keep happening. How do you address that? Well, I, I think as our kids get older, we want them to feel two feelings, I believe. One is that, that sense of wanting to comfort the people who've been affected by this. And I think that's a very appropriate conversation to have. What can we do? What can we do to help those folks in those communities? And, uh, and, and there are things that can be done, even if they may seem like they're not a big deal, sending a card, sending a letter, sending a donation, sending a stuffed animal uh, to a sibling of a kid who's been suffering the loss of a sibling. You know, these, these may seem like inconsequential things, but they do matter. And it is a sense that our kids can do something. But that other feeling we want them to have is confrontation. We want them to feel like uh, these issues indeed have happened before. And what can be done 
so that they won't happen again. And you know, it's amazing that our teenagers have some tremendously useful ideas, very sensitive, thoughtful ideas about these issues. Uh, we might even want to consider uh, electing them to Congress. Um, but in, in the absence of that, uh, we, we need to give them the opportunity to talk about how they can make their school better, how they can make their school safer, how they can make their school a kinder place for everyone who walks in the building. And so I, I think that we uh, want to encourage our kids to both uh, be empathic responders and also to work in the spirit of preventing this from happening again. Some great advice and guidance for some tough conversations. I know I'll be using those tips. Professor, thank you so much for speaking with me. It's my pleasure.